One of the biggest battery companies in the world predicts that in the future, all glass surfaces, whether that's cars, windows, walls, will be covered in see-through film. And that see-through film will produce, well, basically limitless energy from the sun. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. I've just come back from from everything electric, which was in Sydney here in Australia. It was the biggest car show in Australia's history. There was a huge number of people there. It was fantastic to see so many people at the show. I think a lot of people realize that the future is electric and we need energy to power all those electric devices. Well, Panasonic says the future actually will come in the way of a completely transparent thin film. You won't even know that um, there's solar covering your building, your house, your car, because it will be thin, completely transparent. Imagine a future where glass windows and walls of buildings, such as homes and offices and even cars, can directly harness solar energy in place of, well, space-consuming solar panels. The reality is only two years away with the technology developed by Japanese electronics giant Panasonic currently being used in projects in Japan, south of Tokyo. The idea is to enable buildings in crowded urban jungles to serve as discrete mega solar power generators. No one even knows they exist. I mean, the reality is you would never even be able to tell. Panasonic's group chief technology officer said that in an interview, we aim to create an energy generating glass that allows power generation in any area where glass building materials are used. Anything, you can cover it. And it's not even, you can't even see this solar, th this basically solar thin film. Panasonic prints perovskite, a transparent or tinted alternative material to silicon that is said to be better at absorbing light directly onto glass using an inkjet coating method. This allows ultra thin solar cells to be embedded in unconventional spaces such as windows and walls. This is actually already happening and Panasonic is not the only company doing this. There's other, actually other companies right now that are covering office buildings using these super thin films. One of the big challenges with Perovskite was that it was a product that didn't last. It was hard to mass manufacture. It was hard to get it to have a long, well, basically a long life. But those challenges have now been solved. Panasonic is now working to resolve potential vulnerabilities in their product, though. Those include moisture damage. They say for one thing, this is preempted by adding a second glass sheet. The solar cells must be durable enough because they are meant to last for decades, say Panasonic, and we must make it easy for construction companies to use the modules. On top of that, we must make sure the electricity collection and management system is reliable. This is one of the green technologies that Panasonic is pursuing under its green impact environmental vision, in which it is pledged to achieve virtually net zero carbon emissions by 2030. Panasonic is leading Japan's push for the idea of avoided emissions to be considered an international standard and will make its case over the next few years for its completely transparent solar panels. Oh, I mean, not even panels, they're just solar film. The greenhouse gas protocol framework that provides emissions accounting standards used by companies globally tracks progress towards carbon neutrality on three fronts, directly from a company's own operations, from the energy that it buys, and from the rest of its value chain. But avoided emissions, Mr. Agawa argues, is a necessary metric to more accurately track a company's overall carbon impact, taking into account how it enables others in society to slash their emissions. The existing framework is disadvantageous to manufacturers like Panasonic. While it is known for consumer products like washing machines, televisions, batteries that go into Tesla's electric cars, Panasonic also produces industry electronics, um, which include robots. 
and batteries that don't just go in EVs, but go in many, many other products as well. Manufacturing car batteries is highly carbon intensive currently, even for the greenest electric vehicles. And the current protocols hold Panasonic accountable for the significant emissions from its factories. Panasonic's main EV client, of course, is Tesla, its biggest worldwide by far. Now, primarily because of the emissions caused by Panasonic in their manufacturing processes, Panasonic's main EV client, Tesla, is able to avoid the equivalent of 50 tons of carbon dioxide on every one of its cars over its lifetime. That's massive, considering the fact that 1.8 million Tesla electric cars were sold last year worldwide. Panasonic's push for avoided emissions to be a globally acceptable standard is backed by the Japanese government, though critics say the idea amounts to greenwashing and will give manufacturers a free pass from developing greener processes. The counter-argument, though, is that the world would be worse off if companies were to quit the EV business altogether. Nevertheless, Panasonic plans to reduce its carbon footprint of its battery manufacturing by at least 50% by the end of the decade. And the way they're planning to do this is through new methods like replacing cobalt and nickel in batteries, which emit greenhouse gases when extracting those from ore. What they're gonna do is replace some of the product in their batteries with silicon. Panasonic aims to slash its emissions by more than 300 million tons over the next 25 years which amounts to 1% of total global emissions today. That's a huge carbon reduction. Two thirds of this will come from avoided emissions achieved through existing businesses like car batteries and hydrogen fuel cells, they say. Panasonic is also in the race to develop solid state batteries. And I talk about this very much, but they're working on that as well. These can store more energy theoretically, focusing on their use apparently in drones and industrial robots to extend their performance on a single charge. These materials developed for solid state batteries may be applied to automotive uses, the company says. So Panasonic are obviously hoping that they can get in on the solid state battery market as well and possibly supply Tesla with their solid state batteries in the future. Now, getting back to this thin, thin solar film, at some point in the future, I believe it's very likely that governments will regulate that new houses being built, that all windows are covered in this solar film. And I don't really see why at some point in the future, cars won't be covered in it as well. I and mean, we have the new solar EV, the Aptera EV, which is going into pre-production. I've actually ordered one. Hopefully they come to Australia. I don't know if they will, but hopefully they do. But that is a car that runs mostly on the solar on its roof. It's very efficient, very unusual shaped car, but the solar panels give it a huge amount of its energy. In the future, at some point in time, most buildings and cars will be covered in this thin solar film and it will change the way we view the world. It will change the way we use energy. It will change the way we get energy. And I'm, I'm kind of excited to see this happen. We're a fair way off this happening, but I definitely think it's certain that it will happen. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.